Hello, my name is Colin Doyle and I'm a senior SE at Juniper Networks. Today I'm recording the first in a series of videos meant to demonstrate to the viewer how to install, configure, and operate an SD-WAN spoke on their own laptop or desktop computer. The environment we create will be entirely virtual and include two simulated WAN links, a VSRX security gateway SD-WAN endpoint, a WAN emulator to introduce link conditioning to our WAN links, and a client system for traffic generation and testing. Each video in this series will present a specific component or concept of our test environment. My intention is for these videos to be concise and easily consumable, allowing the viewing engineer to focus on specific, relevant topics with limited searching. In this first video, I will discuss the tools and requirements to build our test environment. In my second video, we will set up and configure our WAN emulation virtual machine. The third video demonstrates how to install VSRX and takes you through the first boot up. The fourth video covers the installation of our client side guest, including the installation of simple traffic generation software. In the fifth video, we will onboard our VSRX into our CSO cloud tenant. Finally, our sixth and seventh videos will cover initial policy creation and practical demonstrations, respectively. I like to start any presentation by defining my audience. This helps us both level set on why we are here and what we hope to accomplish. Since I don't know who you are, and since I've hopefully done a well enough job explaining what this series is, let's talk a bit about what this series is not. The series is not meant for just Juniper employees. Whether it reaches a wider audience, I cannot say now, but I will be recording this video so that it can be consumed by anyone. This means no internal websites or confidential information. The viewer will see the testing environment that I use, but this environment is no different than our production environment in terms of operation and features. Basically, I want folks that are interested in learning to be able to learn, regardless of who they are. The series is not an SD-WAN training. There is certainly learning to be gleaned from the later videos on how Juniper's SD-WAN solution works, but I will not be going into any great depth beyond what we need to do to enable our test environment. If you would like more information about the Juniper SD-WAN solution, please reach out to your Juniper account team or visit juniper.net. The series is not a Linux training either. Having experience with simple package installation and CLI commands will certainly be helpful when setting up the WAN and client guests, but it's not required if you stick to my instructions. That said, there can be some nuance in setting up a Linux-based VM, particularly if you want to use a distribution other than the one I'm using. I'm not saying I won't try to help if you reach out to me, just that nuance is out of the scope of this series. And finally, the series is not possible without the very patient instruction of our SD-WAN product engineering staff. They have held my hand in the dark through a very abbreviated enablement period, and content like this would not be possible without them. Let's move on to requirements. First and foremost, you will need a Juniper.net account. If you do not have a Juniper.net account, you can create one by going to Juniper.net, selecting the login button from the upper right hand corner, and then locating the need help signing in link here at the bottom. Click on this link, and you'll be presented with a new user register here button. Click that and follow the instructions. A login to Juniper.net is required to download the virtual SRX gateway software. Second, you will need a hypervisor. I'm using VMware Fusion. And while I imagine you can set up a similar test environment using other hypervisor products like VirtualBox, those discussions are outside of the scope of this series. Third, you will need a laptop or desktop capable of running a pair of small Linux-based VMs, as well as a single instance of VSRX. The system will need to have access to the public internet so it can connect to the CSO cloud controller fabric as well as download required guest images. Here you can see the resources on my two-year-old MacBook Pro, a 2.9 GHz Intel Core i5, and 16 gigabit of memory. I'm not saying that everything's going to run perfectly fast once you have all these VM runnings, but they will work and they will work well. Finally, you will need a portal login for cloud CSO. If you're a Juniper employee, Instructions for access can be found through our intranet. If you are not a Juniper employee, please contact your Juniper account team and they can get you set up. I'd like to finish this video by talking about caveats and considerations for the test environment we will be setting up. Whenever you're setting up a new CSO environment, you'll want to check the release notes. These release notes include supported code versions and links to this code. This is important because certain SD-WAN compatible code, specifically code for the SRX and VSRX gateways, can only be downloaded from links in the CSO release notes. Here, you can see that I've navigated to juniper.net and I've searched for Contrail Service Orchestration 5.1.
we can see here the top hit is the current release, so we'll click on that. And from this page, we'll find the software support section on the left. If we click on software downloads, we'll be taken to a page that shows us the supported versions of code for the types of hardware that CSO supports. Scrolling down, we'll find VSRX and version 15.1 X49D172. Again, this is the only link that can be used to download this code, so you need to come here first. I do not recommend operating your SD-WAN gateway from behind a VPN connection. The astute among you may have noticed that while I say this, I am connected to a VPN. Well, in fact, I've got it suspended, but I was connected before. And for my part, it does work when I'm connected to my corporate VPN. So I'm not saying it cannot work, only that you cannot be certain that it will. So as a rule, you want a direct connection to the internet. Please be sure to understand the types of tenants and the types of hubs so that you can manage your testing or demonstration plans accordingly. There are discrete differences between the service delivery of a provider hub, enterprise hub, and cloud hub. Additionally, CSO tenants can be set up with strict segmentation enabled or disabled. In my test environment, I am using Juniper Managed Service Provider Hubs and a tenant with segmentation enabled. This design provides internet access via the hub or using a local breakout configuration at my spoke. Please refer to CSO documentation for further details or reach out to me directly. Make sure you understand what, if any, security software is installed on your computer. You don't want to be chasing your tail trying to fix a problem you think exists with your XD WAN gateway when it's some local security tool or policy causing the issue. Finally, always remember that the network your computer or laptop has is the same network that your SD WAN spoke has. SD WAN isn't a magic wand. We'll be simulating WAN links that bridge into the same local network adapter on your system. In the absence of link conditioning in your lab, both of these links will behave in the same way. After I end this video, I'm going to delete all of my virtual machines so that we can start from a clean slate and you can follow me as we build our test environment together. Thank you for your time and as always, please reach out to me if you have any questions.